So today we're gonna to be exploring homelessness. My name is Cinnamon Porter. My pronouns are they and she, and I am the mission educator for YWCA McLean County. Before we start, um, I'd like to have some community agreements. So the first one is be present. Uh, we're only here for uh, a short time. So uh, please engage and um, that goes into our next point, which is participate. If you have a question or a comment, please feel free to share that. Uh, let's see, oh, active listening. So listen to understand, um, open and honest communication. Please feel free to chime in um, at any point, but make sure that it is uh, respectful. Embrace and discomfort. And I wanted to see if you all have any other community agreements that you would like to um, add. All right, I'm gonna take that as a no. <laughs> we can go ahead and get going. So I wanted to start off with um, some statistics just to kind of wrap our minds around this, um, th this, this issue of homelessness. Um, so the US Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development defines someone who is homeless as uh, if they lack a fixed, uh, reg regular and adequate nighttime residence. Um, so looking at some statistics, anywhere between 2.5 to 3.5 million Americans sleep in shelters, transitional housing, and public places not meant for human habitation. Uh, that is a lot. Um, that number really stood out to me because, I mean, I know homelessness um, is a problem, but to see just how many Americans are affected by this uh, was truly shocking. Those who are homeless, uh, the top demographics were male um, and adults, African-American, uh, not elderly, unaccompanied slash alone and disabled. Another statistic that stood out to me was that one in four women who um, is experiencing homelessness was there because of violence committed against her. Um, and so I think about the work that YWCA Stepping Stones does uh, to help sexual assault victims um, and how many need emergency uh, housing after they've experienced a sexual assault because it's usually by someone that they know. Um, so that number really stood out to me. So what causes homelessness? Um, obviously there are an array of reasons why someone might be um, experiencing homelessness, but the top uh, the top points were lack of affordable housing. Um, the next one was unemployment. Then we have poverty and low wages. So at the end of this presentation, we're going to talk about some solutions. Um, but what are the reasons do you all know uh, for someone experiencing homelessness? I think a good one, Cinnamon, like you said, is um, disability. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like have some family members who have been homeless in the past. And a lot of the time it was, it had a lot to do with um, disability and not even just like physical disability, but also just like depression, anxiety, PTSD, that kind of thing where they were just unable, it, it was just really hard for them to work. And then obviously all those other things come into play at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, about 20% of the homeless population have a uh, severe mental illness and about 16% uh, had chronic substance use issues. So yeah, those, those things go hand in hand. Anybody else? A different lifestyle from parents. I've seen um, people come out as a member of the LGBT community and be kicked out at a young age. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And <clears throat> I'm going to talk about that on our next slide, which has to deal with uh, homeless youth, uh, because LGBTQ population of homeless youth is huge. I think it's like two times more likely uh, to be to um, be at risk for homelessness. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? I think domestic violence, um, just as you said earlier, Cinnamon, um, is a huge factor. Absolutely. Others could be a criminal background because they can't get into the shelters with criminal backgrounds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's one of a solution is to try to reduce you know, criminalizing folks for being homeless. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to chime in? All right. So an estimated 4.2 million youth and young adults um, experience homelessness at some point in the year. Oops. And of those 4.2 who would experience it at some point in the year, 700,000 are unaccompanied minors, which means that um, they don't have a parent or a guardian or any sort of um, adult with them. And just as I mentioned, um, the LGBTQ youth are uh, more than two times the risk of experiencing homelessness. Uh, and as someone mentioned, it's because um, a lot of it is their family is not accepting. And so what, what other choice do you have? Um, they might be experiencing abuse at home. So not being there um, is better than experiencing that. And for homeless youth, the top demographics were black or being black or Latino, um, LGBTQ, if they are parents and unmarried. Um, and then women, so girls, were actually the top demographic, whereas in adults, it was um, men. So the lack of a GED was one of, um, was like the top uh, risk factor for being homeless. And so family conflict and like family dynamics, um, we talked about someone's sexual orientation, uh, if there is, School problems, these are a lot of the reasons why um, youth become homeless. And then also pregnancy and substance abuse. Oh, someone added uh, in the chat, mental health issues, substance abuse, and unexpected financial issues to cause homelessness. Yep, and uh, we'll talk in a little bit about COVID-19 and how that's, how COVID-19 has exasperated um, the number of people who are experiencing homelessness. So this graphic right here shows how many homeless students there are per year. 
Uh, so this goes up to 2017. Um, but as you can see, the number of students who are homeless is growing. Um, and I know that it is even more um, right now because of COVID-19. What kind of hardships do you think a student who is homeless would experience? They don't have any continuity in their education, so they may, um, you know, they're not stable in terms of where they are physically uh, would be one thing. They don't have any, they don't have the resources necessary to learn. Uh, they don't have an environment that's conducive to learning. They don't have any support from adults or peers. Um, so they have all kinds of obstacles stacked against them. Absolutely. As if school wasn't hard enough. <laughs> And I'm thinking about the students right now who, if you are experiencing homelessness and everything is virtual, you can't be in person for school, what do you do? Any other folks wanna chime in? What kind of hardships do you think a student who is homeless would be experiencing? Well, if they're not getting um, adequate meals or nutrition and they're going to school hungry, that would um, also affect their um, academics and school. Um, so several times homeless kids aren't getting the food that they need um, and therefore that would affect their academics. Absolutely. Need food to power the brain. Um, and again, thinking about COVID-19, if you were receiving free or reduced launches at school, now how do you have access uh, to that? Um, that may also kind of play into like uh, their sleep schedule because, you know, if you're homeless, like, you know, you may not always have a safe space to sleep in or perhaps, um, so when you get to school, you may be tired and not be able to focus uh, as well as if you're hungry, you're probably not gonna be able to sleep well either. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of the time, like the students who are sleeping in school and who aren't paying attention are often labeled as like nuisances or like they get reprimanded or they get in trouble for like falling asleep during class and, and not paying attention. And I feel like a lot of the time it's not necessarily their fault, especially when people inside the school don't know what's going on outside. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and they might not feel comfortable to open up about that because some people might feel ashamed, right? Or don't want to be made fun of or bullied. So they might not um, tell the adults at the school to, to get them the resources that they need. This Anyone also, else? Oh, this can also affect their uh, physical health as well. Um, not getting a proper diet could lead to things like anemia. Um, yep. Yeah, thank you. So we've talked about, <clears throat> you know, some of the hardships that people would face while, um, while they are homeless, but now you have uh, coronavirus. Um, and this has made things um, harder for people who are homeless. So there's a couple of things that I want to talk about here. Um, there is a high transmission rate of coronavirus because if you're staying in a shelter, for example, um, there's, there's no way for you to social distance, right? beds are close together, um, you might not have access to masks, you're around a whole bunch of people. Um, and then if you're not in a shelter, you might not have access to sanitary facilities, right? So all the hand washing that keeps being promoted, you might not be able to do that on a regular basis. And so prior to 
um, the eviction moratorium, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. Researchers predicted that 29 to 40 million people could be evicted. Now, what do you do then? Excuse me. Um, some of these people will be able to find another housing uh, place, but some people might not. So I'm really interested to see, um, you know, the numbers from 2020 going into 2021, uh, how much the homelessness population increases. And so back in April, uh, unemployment rate was 14.7%, which it's typically around 3%. So people are losing their jobs, which means they can't pay rent, and now people are being evicted. Um, luckily, there is an eviction moratorium, which means that um, evictions will be stopped. However, um, some places are not following that and people are still being evicted. Here in Illinois, um, ours, our eviction moratorium was just um, extended to through the end of February. So I'm curious to see if they'll continue that. Um, but for this moratorium, you have to uh, fall under four categories. So let me read this for you. Um, in order to like be protected by this eviction moratorium, uh, the individual expects to earn no more than 99,000, um, is unable to make a full rent or housing payment due to a COVID-19 related hardship, including uh, substantial loss of income, loss of compens compensationable hours, uh, an increase in out-of-pocket expenses directly related to COVID-19. The individual is using the best efforts to make timely partial payments that are as close to the full payment as the individual's circumstances may permit, um, and that an eviction would likely render the individual homeless. So yes, we have an eviction moratorium, but we you still have to prove that you fall under all four of those categories. Um, now, there were some issues in Cook County, especially where uh, landlords were still evicting um, their tenants, even though um, they weren't supposed to be. And it was so strange. I was on Facebook earlier this morning and a video about homelessness popped up um, on how this couple is living in their car uh, because they got evicted even though their state had an eviction moratorium. They went to uh, court and the judge didn't do anything for them. So even though this eviction moratorium is here, um, some people are not following it. Questions, comments? Cinnamon, do you have uh, the eviction mor moratorium for Illinois in writing, or was that just something that uh, you researched and wrote down? Um, no, that's in writing. Could you possibly send that in the chat for us to have access to? Mm -hmm. Do you want the full thing or... Um... Okay, yeah, I'll send it um, at the end. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. So what can we do? This problem is a huge problem, um, but there are things that we can do as individuals to uh, help someone who is experiencing 
homelessness. Um, the first one is acknowledge and engage. So when you see someone who is um, homeless on the street um, or at the park, don't turn away from them. Don't uh, ignore them, right? Acknowledge them, engage in a conversation with them. Um, they might be asking you for money and you might say, hey, you know what? I don't have it, but we could talk for a minute. Now, I know it's kind of hard right now because of COVID-19, but there's still ways that we can acknowledge and engage with them. Uh, promote local shelters. So one thing that you could do is keep contact information of the local shelters um, in your car. So if you're driving somewhere and you pass someone who's homeless, you can pass that out to them. Um, because some people don't know about all the shelters that we have or programs that are available. Donate your clothes, especially socks, um, and also be willing to help in other ways. So, you know, if I saw someone who's homeless, um, they might be asking me for money so I can give them money. Um, or I can say, hey, you know, I don't have any cash, but I can go, you know, would you want something to eat? Do you need something to drink? But always ask before you do it because you might be giving them something that they don't need. Um, and around this time too, uh, donating blankets um, because it is very cold outside. Volunteer your time with your local shelters um, and other organizations. And I'll name some of those um, organizations at the end. You can fundraise. Uh, everybody likes a good GoFundMe, right? So you can fundraise for your local shelter um, or to purchase supplies, things of that nature. And then advocate for policy change with your local candidates. So figure out what is their policy on homelessness uh, and, and advocate for those people who are experiencing homelessness. Anyone have any other ideas about what we can do here locally? Um, if I can just say a couple words about some of these items. Um, I'm with Homeless mm -hmm. Ministries, which is one of the shelters uh, for people who experience homelessness here in this community. And with regard to volunteering your time, we are really challenged right now. Our volunteer program is on hold because of COVID. So that can, you know, that could be challenging. Um, you know, and every organization has their own uh, approach to how they're doing that. Um, and actually we do have, I, you know, I don't, you know, every, everybody's fundraising, but uh, we do have a current fundraiser going on. So I would invite you if you're interested to go to nightinacar.org and learn more about that. I'm not, I don't mean to get on a, a soapbox here, but um, just wanted to make you aware that we do have a fundraiser going on um, and we're helping people understand what it's like to be homeless. It's called night in a car, which is, you know, a lot of the people we're talking about don't even have a car to spend the night in. Uh, mm -hmm. But some of them do have a car and that is where they live. Um, and so we're helping people understand more about the homelessness situation in our community. Thank you for sharing that. And will you post that in the, uh, the link in the chat box? Sure. Any other folks have ideas about what we can do here locally? Oh, I forgot to mention coats. That's another good thing to donate. My idea also would be to teach and talk about homelessness. So if you're out in the community and you hear a negative response, somebody about the way they are acting about somebody being homeless, try to talk to them, try to give, make it a teaching moment and turn their ideas around. And, you know, even go, have you ever been homeless? Have you ever had an opportunity to not know where your meal, next meal is coming from? Turn that moment into a teaching moment and be that advocate for that homeless individual. 
Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. To go off of that, I just wanted to say, I think that's a really good point. And I've been doing that a lot recently, um, especially like, and it's a shame, but like, I always saw from other people like in the car and like, people are always like, oh, don't make eye contact. Like, don't make eye contact. And I've broken out of that. And like now, if someone's like, don't make eye contact, I'm like, why? Like, that's not okay to do. Like you're dehumanizing them and you should want to help them. And I've definitely been teaching other people that like, that's not an acceptable way to treat any human, let alone someone who's going through a really hard time. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> I would also encourage people to think about their language. Um, and just like most of us don't want to be described by an adjective. So rather than just talk about a homeless person, talk about somebody who is experiencing homelessness because it could happen to any of us. Um, it's a temporary situation um, and it shouldn't define people. So I would encourage you to think about your language and when possible say a person experiencing homelessness rather than a homeless person. Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of that education. Any other folks want to chime in? So this is what we can do um, on a small scale, uh, but looking for some bigger solutions. Uh, what would it take to eradicate homelessness? Um, these things, these are big things. <laughs> um, but we need affordable housing uh, because right now people are paying, you know, half of their check into housing, and then that leaves very le little left over for healthcare, childcare, food, all the other expenses. Um, and so I know that that's an issue here um, locally. Access to comprehensive healthcare. Uh, so making sure that, you know, if someone um, does have a substance uh, use issue or um, they need medication for mental illness, or they get sick, right? They should still have access to healthcare. And especially now in the times of COVID-19, um, we need to make sure that folks who are experiencing homelessness um, have access to getting the vaccine. Job training and employment. Uh, so, making sure that that person has a set of skills that would make them um, employable and providing jobs to folks who are experiencing homelessness. Um, that would be a big game changer for a lot of people. Strengthen crisis response systems. And so what that means is um, instead of, let's say, calling the police on um, someone who is experiencing homelessness, uh, we need to be able to have our crisis teams like PATH and Home Sweet Home and, and places of that nature um, able to step in. Because criminalizing someone for uh, being or experiencing homelessness you know, just isn't right. And then we talked about how, okay, now you might have a criminal record and now you have limited access to shelters. Uh, someone posted in the chat, uh, there is Medicaid Chestnut Community Health Systems for referrals for healthcare. Thank you for sharing that. And then reduce the criminal justice uh, involvement. So again, um, let's let's access our social services um, in, instead of uh, law enforcement.
Someone asked, has any organization put together a resource list for people experiencing homelessness that we can get copies of to carry with us? Um, I know that PATH has a uh, resource list. I could try to um, get access to it, but does anybody else know of any um, resource list? Oh, there you go. So PATH can provide that and contact Violet at 211. All right. Any questions or comments about these solutions or other things that you feel might need to be a part of our solutions? Uh, sentiment as far as job training and employment right now, um, mm -hmm. you know, with COVID, I'm a career coach at Goodwill and uh, we are still working from home. So access to uh, computers, technology right now, and the job training is uh, very limited due to the COVID. So that is a issue um, facing your solution. So um, even after COVID, um, computer um, limitation is very limited within the community. You don't have access to the career center. You don't have access to the libraries. Um, you don't have access to computers. So you cannot find employment. You can't go virtual job training without a computer. So technology is a big issue right now. Yeah, thank you for adding that. Someone posted in the chat box, um, PATH does provide the access to housing after hours and weekends, putting people in hotels if necessary. Both shelters have reduced capacity due to COVID. Um, yeah, thank you for adding that. And um, capacity of the shelters, um, it feels like is always at its max point. Um, so now this means that even more people are out on the street um, because of COVID. Any other solutions? So some local resources uh, is we have PATH Crisis Center, so they're 211. Um, they have that resource list. Um, and as someone mentioned, uh, they're able to uh, house folks after hours and on the weekends if necessary. Um, and they would also have um, access to other social services to help um, an individual who's experiencing homelessness. Um, Marianne, did you say that you were from um, Home Sweet Home? Yes. Awesome. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Home Sweet Home? Um, sure. Uh, we're one of the shelters in town. We can accommodate men, women, and children. Children have to be with a, a parent or a legal guardian, so they can either be with a mother and or a father. Um, and as Karen Zangerly said, we are limited in our capacity because of COVID. You talked about overcrowding in shelters. 
well, we don't want to overcrowd. We want to try to make sure that people have um, the space that they need so that they, uh, we can reduce the possibility of um, contagion. So um, yeah, our numbers are lower than, than normally. Um, let's see what else. I mean, we obviously we require people to wear masks all the time when they're inside. Um, Yeah, it's, you know, it's presented a number of challenges. We've talked about technology. We've tried to provide technology resources uh, for both children, uh, for their uh, remote learning, and for adults who are seeking employment. I mean, it's not the same as, you know, using the library or going to a career center, but it's, you know, we're doing the best that we can with that. Um, one of the things that we've had to do um, is that in the past, prior to COVID, we were able to invite people to come in and have meals with us. And because of COVID, we can't do that. We have been giving out sack lunches and some hot meals as well. Um, but that's been a problem because there are people who are on the streets or living out of their cars or you know, um, sheltering with somebody else and um, they need food assistance. And so you know, we're trying our best to try to meet that need, but we cannot invite them to come in and have meals with us because that just increases the potential for exposure. Thank you for sharing that. And if I may ask, what is what is your biggest need? How could uh, folks on this call um, help Home Sweet Home? Well, we actually have some lists on our website. So if you okay. want, to, I, you know, I'll, I'll post what our website is. Um, but we have some lists for what our, our urgent needs are and kind of our everyday needs. Um, that type of thing. And so you're, you're welcome to look at that. And, you know, if there's anything that jumps out at you that you'd like to help us with, we would greatly appreciate that. And as I mentioned, I, I know, you know, this, this session is not for me to promote our fundraiser, but I would encourage you to check that out and see if that's something that you might want to participate in. It's a way to learn more about homelessness and also a, a way to raise funds to support uh, one of the programs here in town that helps people who are experiencing homelessness. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, then we have <clears throat> Salvation Army Safe Harbor uh, being another shelter here in Bloomington Normal. Um, and then lastly, I got a lot of good information from um, the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty. They had a lot of good statistics um, and ways to get involved on small scale and big scale. So um, I would encourage you all to, to go on their website and uh, read a bit more. And then obviously the CDC had um, a lot of information um, and then HUD. All right, so questions, comments, 